This is a cheap plotter. Now, it's not the cheapest of plotters. Uh, you can go on Amazon, you can spend as little as like a couple hundred bucks on a machine. Or you can go to like Graph Tech or Roland and you can spend upwards of like $10,000. And there's a myriad of options in between all that. So the question is really like, what level of a machine do you need to cut window tint? Because window tint is a little bit finicky. It's different, because with vinyl, which is what most of these machines are made to cut, vinyl is soft and the backing for it is hard. But for window tint, the thing is, the backing is so very thin and clear and just very fragile. And the window tint is the harder portion. So you're literally cutting through the tint portion of it, but not the liner. And that's where you need just a more refined machine to get those like little, just little, little differences. So we're gonna go run through this thing. I've been using it for a couple of months and uh, I definitely have some thoughts. So what? $1,600, we have the Workhorse One Plotter from PlotterDepot.com. It's a solid machine. It'll actually cut out window tint and get the job done. But that being said, I've been incredibly frustrated with some weird quirks that this thing has. And, uh, and let's just dive into it and see what those are. So I'm a big fan of using 24 inch rolls and that's what we got loaded in right now. But if we look at the, uh, the little pinch rollers, they're a little on edge. It's not too bad. You have a solid roller on it, but not with a lot of wiggle room on the sides. Let's just, let's just for kicks and giggles, see what a 36 inch looks like. So to swap out the roll, it's pretty simple. You just lift up on this, you roll your film back up, pop it off of those uh, metal spindle roller thingies, take your roll, your longer roll, put it on, feed it back into the machine, and uh, there's no wide roller here. So I basically have to line it up with the far roller and then move this one here. So you can see we don't even have a lot of clearance. We're literally halfway past one of these rollers. Same on both sides. Normally you would have an extra long roller right here to accommodate any position you want on here. So when I first set this thing up, I mean, I was a little confused because it's only like halfway on the roller and if you're off tracking, it's just gonna, you know, it's gonna be spitting out and retracting a bunch of film and just rip right through it. And you know what they told me? They said it's not great with 36 and 24 inch rolls. Okay, all right, just add, add, you know, that's what most people are using. So uh, recommended to use 40s, but you can still use 36. They're just gonna be a little bit on it. So roller positioning aside, um, then you have plotter setup. Now on a lot of plotters, it'll look something like this where it's all automatic. You have the plotter head go to one side, you know, you spit some film out and then it automatically retracts it back. Uh, to find out where the edge of the film is to start cutting. So you can just throw the roll in, click a button, and then go do something else. This is a little bit more of a manual process, but it's not a pain to do. There's just a couple little things uh, I gotta show you on this menu. Okay, so first we need to do uh, that peel. So we have move X and Y. So it's set up right now to do exactly what I was showing you. Plotter head goes back and forth and then we can just press these buttons and look, it's super easy to just like spit out and retract film. And then when you have where you wanna go, you click this button right here, ding, and then it pops up speed and force. So the speed and the force are your cut settings. So you can make this cut faster or slower. The force is what you wanna set and just kind of leave it alone. You're not gonna really be messing with this much. Because like I said at the beginning, um, once it's set to cut exactly through the film, you don't want it to cut through the liner. So if you start messing with this force button, you're gonna cut right into this strip right here, and it's just gonna screw up your blade, your settings, and you're gonna have to reset up the plotter all over again. So once you get it at a certain spot, you just, you don't wanna touch those settings anymore. The problem is that that is the main setting. So you have to go into a sub menu in order to do this type of stuff. So every time that I make a cut or I have to swap out a roll or adjust the rollers, it keeps going back to the force and speed. And a lot of times, if you don't have those things written down somewhere, 
you're gonna mess them up real quick. Okay, let's pretend I just cut out a couple of patterns. I got a bunch of excess film and I wanna retract it back into the plotter. Oh, look, my menus are on speed and force. So if I just press this button up, there goes my speed. What was it at? I don't remember. Uh, and then I wanna move the cut head left or right. And oh no, my, uh, what was that? Was that 50, 54? Is it 57? I don't quite remember. You always have to press this button to do that type of stuff. So you can see if they just have those menus flipped, which I don't know why they have it set that way. It's usually when you have a material and you know you're cutting through it, just, you just leave it. Unless you need to swap it out for like a thicker material, you might as well just get some different cut blades and just set up some presets. But it doesn't even have presets either. So there's a lot of manual, little fidgety things like that that you always have to keep in mind. And it only takes a couple of seconds for your whole game to get thrown off. And then it rips through a pattern and then you have to readjust some settings if it messed up that cutter or anything. A lot of these little features are not make or break features, but they are quality of life things that make you question your sanity from time to time. A couple of the extra things that are just not on a machine like this is gonna be like the air system. So they will lock down the film. It actually has little air vent holes. Um, so it'll pull the film down a little bit more when it's cutting to hopefully get a cleaner pattern. Less obvious stuff that, that you can't really see is gonna be like upgraded parts, things that are more reliable in my early YouTube videos uh, that that graph tech is actually still running today where a machine like this, I don't quite know how long it's gonna last. It does have a nice quiet uh, servo motor versus a stepper motor. And I'll try and find some footage of a stepper motor. And this will cut a test. It's obnoxious, it's super obnoxious. And like I said, you need it to be a little bit more refined so when you're cutting through window tint, it just does the job and it doesn't rip through it and you're not always tweaking these little things. So some of these features are just gonna go a little bit unnoticed until you're having some major problems with them. Now let's hop into some software and just cut a pattern out and see what it does. So for this, we're gonna cut out a Jeep Wrangler back window. And uh, the Wrangler has a really funny cutout, so I figured it'd be good to show exactly how this thing kind of just goes back and forth. Remember, this was already set up for a 36 inch roll, so we're gonna swap this out for a shorter roll. It also saves me a little bit of material, but we get that in place, and then we can move our film, and then move our cut head exactly where we need it to go, right about there. You click the button, and let's go cut some tint. So this isn't gonna be a software tutorial. I am using Film Cut though, and we're gonna pull up a Jeep Wrangler back window, but just to kind of give you a brief tour of what a tint software might be like. Um, this is kind of what they have to offer. So they'll have all your patterns and they'll arrange them in any number of ways. And so this is your cut window. So the patterns will always go in like this direction here. So you can delete them, you can drag and drop, you can manipulate them any which way that you want. You can Tetris them, you know, all together to save you the most amount of film possible and uh, make sure everything's good. So this is a 24 inch wide roll. So we're gonna change that. That makes our cut window a little bit smaller. We're gonna drag this Wrangler window on here. And then all we need to do is click cut. That's, that's literally it. Okay, so as soon as I click this button, it should start cutting, let's see. I did it. Oh, it is getting scary close to the side. So I have it set up to roll all the way out and then cut on the pole. And that's a really good setting to have. So it'll make your cuts a lot cleaner. But if you want to look at that roller right there, you can see, ooh, it's getting really scary. So as it's cutting the film out, Oh God, that's so close. <laughs> so that's just what I mean by rolling off track. I didn't intend uh, for that to happen. Got to make sure I don't change my settings here. So I'm going to roll this. I'm going to cut this off and we're going to see uh, 
how this weeds over on the glass board over there. And it got, a, it got a little scary there. It wasn't like that when I first got it and it's slowly been doing that. So there might be a little tweaking thingy that I can do to make it roll straighter, but that's just what's been happening. So I really should have a cleaner setup for all of this. Um, I don't use the plotter all that often. So we just have a glass board sitting against the wall right now. Now I have the film side facing me and ideally all I want this to do is just peel clean. So let's, uh, let's just start and see how it's gonna work. I intentionally did a rather complicated cutout just to kind of show if it can handle stuff like that. So if all your settings are right, oh, look at that, perfect. So that is what you want every time. You just, anytime you go to pull your pattern, you just want it set up in a way where everything pulls super clean and you don't have to fight with any little edges and stuff like that. So it is possible to get a machine like this to do that. There was a little bit of funny tweaking and you're always gonna have to kind of adjust some stuff. And like you saw, it's got some quirks, but all together, can we load some film, cut it out, get our patterns so we can shrink them and install? Yes, yes, this machine will do that and it does it pretty well. Get past those quirks and you will be golden. So I hope this was a good comprehensive review of what it's like to actually use this machine. Um, I'm probably gonna be trying out some different machines here in the future, so if you liked them, subscribe, comment, and if you wanna see me use this uh, in my daily workflow, please come check out my live streams and uh, hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.